welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie, and we're two crazy private cousins. I don't know. Talking about uh, data privacy and privacy in general, especially online. And especially since we're all kind of living online right now. Yes, we are. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yep. Like we're coming at you online right now. Yeah. I and like- what got me thinking about this was, oh, we're looking for a new VPN is what got uh, me thinking about like data privacy and just like privacy for pretty much anything that you do online. And that's what a VPN is for. And Tom actually has had to describe to people what a VPN is because some people just have no idea. And really what it is, is when you have, if you have a VPN on your phone or your laptop, you turn it on and it'll basically disguise your location so that if somebody was like, trying to get your information they really couldn't and because the vpn kind of locks it virtually locks it down Mm -hmm. do you guys have one yes kyle has to be on a safe network because if he ever uses his military computer at home it has to be that way ah gotcha which one do you guys use I honestly don't know (laughs) because he handles that. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) To be totally honest. (laughs) No, that's fine. The reason why I was looking into this is because, um, what is it? Oh, we want to get a new one because the price has gone up, which that's not a big deal. But at the same time, when going into our bank accounts, the VPN, because it's secure, won't let us in. And what kind of VPN are you if you're not protecting our banking information? If I can't use a VPN to log into my bank, why am I even going to bother with you? Like that shouldn't be happening. And it's also happening with like other apps, which is weird too. It's like Spotify, Sorry, you can't use this the, this VPN while listening to Spotify. Like, what? That's weird. That, sh- that shouldn't matter. I should be able to use it no matter what, whether I have a VPN on or not. Right, exactly. So it's like, I'm not going to pay you $100 a year if I then can't protect myself while trying to get into my banking information. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And as just like a general rule of thumb too, like if a VPN seems like too aggressive for you guys out there, um, another way just to kind of keep yourself secure. And obviously this is never going to be a hundred percent because I'm sure there are ways to create this and it not be real. But when you are submitting stuff online, like your personal information or your financial information, like when you're shopping somewhere, if you look in the browser, there should be a lock icon on the status bar. And that basically means that your information will be safe when it's transmitted because it's going to um, encrypt the software and it's going to scramble it. So that way they can't like keep or seal your personal information. Yeah. Well, and also what helps is Tom was talking about this. I've never really used it, but it's probably because I'm not a big online shopper. Like Mm -hmm. I use Amazon, like that's it. And I'm not worried about my information getting stolen from there. No. Um, uh, anyway, like he goes, if there's a website that he's not sure of, but he wants to buy something off of, he actually looks them up on like the better, better business bureau to like, see, okay, how long have they been in business? And there's like a couple of other key points that you're supposed to like look for to make sure that they're valid. Mm-hmm. And another thing uh, somebody mentioned to me, cause we were, I were, we were having a conversation about this, which is, I suppose why we're having this talk right now. Um, they were saying like, Oh, well I always use PayPal because if I pay yes. through PayPal, they're not really getting my information. Um, PayPal already has all of my information and is paying it for me, but they're not really getting a hold of any of my banking information. So that could be a tip too. Yes, I use PayPal a lot for stuff that I am buying that is like 
like you said, that's not really on Amazon or other areas just to make sure because it is an extra security. And then um, PayPal has buyer protection also. So there's that as well. It's good. Yeah. Um, I feel something too that might seem kind of basic, but I actually see it a lot is um, don't overshare on social media sites. Like I feel a lot of people are kind of oversharing. Um, I even see it in the military spouse community. People will be like, they'll post a picture of their military ID and be like, look at my new military ID that I got. And it's like, well, you just put your picture out there. You put your DOD number out there. You put your birthday out there. Um, So don't do that. I mean, and I'm sure for a lot of you out there, you're going, well, duh. But just as a reminder, you know, don't put any of that personal information. Out. Don't post pictures of your IDs. Don't put your phone number out there, your address, obviously your social security number, because it could end up anywhere. So just don't put that kind of stuff on social media. Don't, and don't even share, like I saw it a lot too. Don't share when you're going on vacation because then you're telling people that they can break into your house. Yeah. That's why when I posted that we're going on vacation, I never said when. I just said that we're going. Yeah. You didn't say when. You didn't say where. Um, so, yeah. I mean, people already have on on your Facebook, they already have a general idea of where you live, you know, um, like, oh, you live in Humboldt Park or wherever it might be. So they already have a general idea. And then if you're going to tell them you're going to go on vacation, you know, you're just adding things to the pot that you don't need to add. So I know this seems very basic, but just a reminder that you saying like, hey, guys, I'm leaving for Hawaii tomorrow please don't put that on your Instagram. Yeah. And actually that's why when we were in Vegas, um, we really didn't post any photos until we got back Mm -hmm. because we were like, didn't really want anybody to know that we were going anywhere or anything like that. Like we posted, I think to maybe like our 24 hour story, not very often, but I mean, that's gone in a flash versus a post is there, you know? Right. And I get it's exciting. You're on vacation or you're doing whatever, but just keep that in mind that there are people out there that their sole purpose in life is to take things from you. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's also why we have family that'll come and check on our house. Like when we leave and you have the automatic lights and, you know, regular security stuff, we have our cameras. So that's another thing. Like, make sure you have home security if you're going to post something. Yeah, that too. You know? And it was actually funny that Connie brought this topic up because I actually had a really good scam happen to me last week. One of the longest, one of the best ones that I've had happen in a long time. Um, so I got a call from a number and they left me a voicemail. And I wish I could remember it verbatim, but it was something like, this is blah, 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 calling from your bank. But they said my bank name. I'm not going to put my bank name out there for you guys. But just so you get the idea, they said my bank name, that there was an issue with recent purchases on card number. And they said my last four of my credit card number or my debit card number and that I needed to call them to straighten it out. It legit had me for a minute. I was like, holy shit, what happened? And I was like, wait, no. Let me get into my online banking and see. So, you know, you get on there and you look and you don't see anything. But I mean, they knew my name. They knew what bank I used and they knew the last four of my credit card. So, I mean, these people are getting pretty efficient in their scams that for a brief moment, I was like, holy shit. But, you know, if you ever call the number back, you know, they want you to do something like verify your credit card number or enter your birthday and like your bank will never ask you those kinds of information. And usually if something is going on with your bank, it's not from like an automated person. Somebody's going to call you and actually be a real person and just give like bare basic details, you know, Hey, this is Sherry. I'm calling from Chase. I have a question for you about something that's going on with your bank. Can you give me a call at this number when you get a chance? Like, Well, honestly, I've never really heard of a bank calling you about transactions. Normally, it's on you to look at your bank account to see if there's any bad transactions. 
I have. And you'll just um, get fees upon fees, and that's that. <laughs> I've definitely gotten calls about suspicious activity. Um, maybe it's just USAA. They're really good about being protective. Like, if they, you know, based on your address, they know where they live. And if they see there's a transaction happening in Alabama, like, they're going to call and be like, hey, are you on vacation right now? And you can be oh, like, no, no. see, my no, my card doesn't call. They just immediately, like, cut off your card. So, like, if I say forget to call them when on vacation they'll Mm -hmm. automatically like within my first purchase basically make my debit card dead until i call them back and Mm -hmm. say oh no that is me i am there yeah i would like to use that yeah i i need to use my card so just letting it out there that they're getting more and more advanced every day uh they are finding any information they can to see as legitimate as possible. Like I said, for a brief moment, I had a panic attack and I was like, oh shit. Like what happened? Somebody's stealing my money. No, but it was fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy. All the more reason to use a VPN. Mm -hmm. It's scary how advanced these people are. And I'm one of the strange people that refuses to use iCloud because my iCloud got tapped into once and people stole information from my iCloud and then tried to use it to not only like steal from us, but to also break up my marriage, which I think is just absolutely asinine. So what? I refuse to use my iCloud. Um, that's to probably break up your marriage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. They took, you know, I'm sure I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm not the only one, you know, your loved one tends to have, provocative pictures of your other loved ones especially if you're military because you know you're not always around each other so let's just be real so they took that picture one of those said pictures out of my phone and turned it around and sent it back to me and was like oh yeah your husband sent me this and was talking about a threesome and I was like what he we he what what the like, fuck are yeah. you talking about? Like legit, like they legit tried to play it off. Like he was the one that was doing something wrong. And I'm like, motherfuckers. Wow. So I personally don't use iCloud for those reasons because that's where they stole it from. I'm sure things you, have changed. How did you figure it out? Because um, Kyle told me what he did. I was like, how could they possibly have gotten hold of your stuff? Like, did any of your buddies get your phone at work? And he's like, no, it's locked. Like it requires you know, my code. And, um, I think he got in touch with Apple. This happened quite a long time ago now. Like that was the other problem. We were like one year, maybe two years into our marriage. So it was just not, (laughs) not it was not a starting point. So, um, I'm pretty sure he finally called Apple and they were like, yeah, it looks like this weird number from Pakistan logged into your iCloud. And he was like, what? So wow. I'm sure iCloud is probably improved and I really shouldn't hold anything against them, but it just makes me really uncomfortable. So I personally do not use iCloud. Yeah. And I was going to say, that's like the only thing that I keep in my, in my iCloud is photos. Yeah. That's like literally the only thing. Now you make me want to turn off my iCloud. <laughs> Which if you have just regular photos is fine, but keep those provocative ones somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That was the thing okay. that was that pissed me off the most was not even the fact that they just wanted to like steal our money that they literally tried to ruin our relationship. Like, why How were they trying to get your money? They were just like, hey, he's doing this. You need to send me money. No, not that. But like they tried to get into our bank accounts, too. Like, you know how you, you get notifications when it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they were just. Unusual yeah, exactly. So we just saw the path that they were going down. Like, let me try to break up your marriage and empty your bank account. And I was like, wow, this is like, this is ridiculous. Like first, I mean, if you want to steal my money, I get it. But really like what you're going to try to ruin my marriage at the same time. Like that's fucked up. Because they're hoping to distract you and then take the money. Is what I it really guess. Is. Yeah, I you're probably assume. right. Oh, I was so, I was so mad. Well, and at first I was living at Kyle. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and he was, Excuse you? <laughs> and he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, bro, seriously. And like at that point in our marriage, I, I remember that picture. And I was like, no, I really don't want you to like, mm-mm, you don't need this. And he's like, come on, I love you. And I'm like, okay, fine. And of course it turned around and bit me in the ass. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> of course. 
Duh. There you go, guys. You got all the lovely insides of crazy things that happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that that never happened to me. Jeez. Jeez Louise. I know, right? The picture's probably still floating around the internet somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, Any I know, right? that. I know. It's crazy, though. But see, guys, they can get into anything, even something that you think is, like, as secure as Apple or one of these apps that are, like, lock your photos in here. And then you're like, oh, my photos are safe. And they're really not because that app is like, oh, ha, 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 just kidding. I'm using these for other things. Don't trust well, it. Well, and that's the, like, second part of all of the privacy is, like, you know, I'm not saying you have to read your terms of service, but they have your privacy settings. You should definitely go take a look. Take a look yes. to see if they can take your information and sell it. Because now, since Facebook got in trouble, a lot of these apps have your privacy settings and just exactly what each setting is for. And like, I remember right before I got off of Facebook, I like did not allow them to use any of my private information Mm -hmm. or anything. Like I turned it all off. I was like, no, 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 absolutely not. You're not allowed to use my information. No, definitely not. And actually Facebook just got in trouble again. I still don't know exactly what happened, but there was a massive Facebook logout. Um, What was it last Friday? I think it was last Friday. Like everybody on Facebook got logged out supposedly for them to change some sort of setting like configuration. And everybody was like, what in the hell? Um, Oh, I bet. So Facebook is still getting in trouble, but I do still have my Facebook. I did get back on there, but yeah, I have everything off or marked or whatever, which is still not perfect. You guys, if you are on social media, no matter what you are at risk, like for people for buying and selling your information. So just know whatever you put out there, no matter how safe you think it is, it's never 100% safe. And thus a VPN. <laughs> and I wish we had yes. a VPN sponsor or something. <laughs> I know. We're going to we'll work, work on, on sponsors, it. guys. If you want to if you wanna be a sponsor and you listen to us, hit us up at our email. Or know somebody. Or know somebody. Or that too. You know. You never know. All the um, above. That's exactly. actually one of the reasons I switched to a MacBook is because I didn't want to deal with like the viruses and the people tapping in. Oh yeah, for sure. Everything I understand, it's harder on a MacBook. I don't know all the logistics of it. I'm not a yes. computer person, but I can tell you I've already had it for a year and I've had knock on wood, zero issues with my Mac. Mm-hmm. Actually, I do remember when I had my Dell that uh, I used to have to basically like clean it with malware like protection mm-hmm. every week. It got to a point where it was like every week my information was getting basically sucked away. And on mm-hmm. on that note, also like so, say you like Google. Google sells your information, of mm-hmm. course. Now, if you don't necessarily mind that you've become a commodity. That's fine. Just do you. But I just want to let people know out there, there are other browsers that you can use that when you type in a search, they actually will pay you for your search. And if you end up seeing ads on your search, because they want that data of whatever you're searching, it's not even necessarily like your information. It's like, we want to know inside your mind, what are you looking for? and stuff like that, they'll actually pay you. It's not a lot. It's like 60 cents, you know, stuff like that. It adds up over time and depending on how much you use it. Right. And even this um, browser that my husband uses, it's it's called Brave. You can also turn it off and say, no, I want you to keep all of my searches secure. I don't want you to pay me for my searches. Mm -hmm. I just don't want anybody using any of my searches to sell me stuff yeah so like it's kind of you can get like both like if you needed some extra cash you could just search stuff all day (laughs) and get some money (laughs) (laughs) or if you really just don't want people taking whatever you search for you could turn it off and speaking of turning it off because you were talking about it and you also just talked about malware and I'm guilty of it too. turn your computer off. Cause even though when you just close it and you think that it's off or in quiet or sleep mode or whatever you want to say, you're actually leaving your computer open 
and connected to the internet, which leaves you susceptible for like road attack, rogue attacks, which is like what was happening to you, Connie, when you were talking about like you had to clean it out with malware like that. Yeah. If you just when you just close your computer, you're leaving your computer susceptible, susceptible to those kind of things happening all the time. So make yeah, sure you I blame actually- LimeWire. <laughs> Oh my god! Because it was the era. It was eighth grade. Like it was the era of LimeWire. So oh I blame god. all the junk music I downloaded. I did that too. <laughs> I remember LimeWire. LimeWire was the shit. But well, we thought it was the shit until the computer exploded. So. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Turn 100%. your computer off. Uh, I know we're probably all guilty of it because it's super easy to just close your lid and not actually shut it off. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I really don't feel that bad about it when it's on my when I'm on my Mac but I for sure turn off my computer every day for work yeah that is not a Mac I don't know my Mac I'm just like it's fine (laughs) all I do is exactly all all I do are these podcasts on it and I'm just kidding I do some more stuff on it but like there's nothing crazy important on my particular Mac absolutely worried about and one of the cool tips I saw when Connie and I were like researching this was um, to use pass phrases instead of passwords. So the difference, obviously, between a password and a pass phrase is a pass phrase is a series of random words or a sentence. And the more characters you use in your pass phrase, the stronger it is. And then the advantage of these is that it's um, easier to remember usually because you're thinking of a full sentence, but it's harder for the cyber attackers, cyber attackers to hack. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that's what Tom ends up using on like all of his laptops. Mine are much simpler than uh, his. Yeah, it's something I just started doing because for the longest time, like I was that goofy person that was like using the same password for everything. And I was like, okay, I'm like asking to be attacked. So I need to change this. And I had like just read about like passphrases and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, passphrases make sense because it's kind of like giving you a reason to remember it, like a goofy little line or an inside Mm -hmm. joke or something that will help you remember it. And then they're all different, you know, and you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your shit. Yeah. I also, because I keep on having like so many different passwords and now they all require different amounts of like uppercase, lowercase explanation Mm -hmm. marks. So I've actually just gone old school and just write it down on paper because I'm like, no one's coming in my office and taking any of these passwords. It's fine. Should yeah. probably have Tom lock it up, but I actually just saw um, a comedian was talking about it. Kyle and I were watching like it was like the best comedians of like 20, 2020. And so it was like little like 10 minute or 15 minute scripts from like 15 different comedians. And there was literally one talking about passwords. He's like, okay, so I'm using my usual password. And then he's like, I get an email and now you need to add a capital letter. And he's like, okay, so now that there is a capital letter at the beginning of my usual password. And then he was like, okay, now you need a special character. And he's like, capital letter, exclamation point. <laughs> like doing all the things that all of us do, like the standard things, like one, two, three, four at the end, explanation point, capital letter. Like you're just bare bone changing it to appease the new rule and it, we were laughing because we we're like yep that's 100 percent accurate <laughs> yes it is i tried to be a little bit more creative with that with my password because i've never heard of a pass phrase before but maybe i'll start changing today. them yeah maybe <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe i'll just keep on living on the edge <laughs> of my passwords uh, but yeah I try to be a little bit more, uh, you know, unusual than just like, okay, well, I'll just change the first letter to be capital. Fine. Yeah. And it's not like Tom, one, two, three, exclamation no. point or, or Tom. It's something that literally five, five. I am the only person that knows this. Like, it's like a really old, weird nickname that I used to have, or that at least mm. my, me and my friends used to goof around about. Mm. So... Yeah, it's more like something we used to goof about. And so Interesting. then it just, I'm not I'm not saying more than that. And you're never gonna know. <laughs> I know. I'm being um, funny. I know. So it's I, like that. And then I add a bunch of like random like letters and symbols and stuff to it. There you go. I have to say I love that the MacBook is like you can't open it unless it's your finger. Like unless somebody oh, cut off my finger. Not like that. <laughs> unless somebody cut off my finger, they're kind of fucked. 
Well, that is good. Yeah, no, mine has a regular power button because it's older. That's so okay. I got it right after college. But they are real fancy. They're all, and they're getting fancier. They are getting fancier, which is pretty cool. Um, we're gonna be doing retina scans soon, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> eh, no, thank you. Face ID is enough. Yeah, I actually there there have been some memes that are like, you know, the fingerprint was actually way more convenient than the face ID. And it like was. now, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it was convenient. The face thing is kind of a little bit convenient until everyone started wearing a mask. Yeah. And now I type my password in more than I ever have in my life. Because you know it ain't recognizing you with a mask on. Yep. Oh my god. And there were like not conspiracies, but like, oh, they're gonna update it so that it'll recognize you in a mask. And I was like, no. I'm not doing that update. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so somebody could have the same kind of eyes and eyebrow and forehead as me and get in. Like yeah, no, thank you. How- yeah, you could have similar eyes to me and get in. I don't think so. No, thank you. Exactly. So another little tip that I saw that I didn't really think about, and I don't know if Connie, if you thought about this either, is that they recommend that when you're not using your Bluetooth to disable it or turn it off, because um, there are threats that can be that can exploit you through your Bluetooth connectivity. Yes. So. I, I mean, I yeah. kind of knew it, but like, it was getting really annoying that like my phone would always like connect to my car like Mm -hmm. so say tom turns on my car and uses it because he does sometimes he goes to work in my car um it'll like automatically like connect to my phone and start like playing like my music until like he drives far enough away so i started turning (laughs) off and what is really annoying is that on iphones if you turn it off it'll only turn off for a day you would have to continually turn off your bluetooth or else it automatically turns back on how crazy is that well if you go into the actual setting and actually turn it off and not just like yeah the the like white out off but you turn it like off off then it won't come yeah. on the next day but yeah if you just do it like basic in the settings where you just tap it then yes it comes on the next day and that's a that's actually another point in point like don't just put it in invisible mode or undetectable mode like turn it completely off yeah, I have to do it m- more often, like when I go out, because like I forget about it, because I turn it on to like have my car play my music, and then I forget about it. And I never turn it back off. Like at my home, I'm not really concerned. There's nobody here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess somebody could try to still piggy off of my um, Bluetooth from like outside, but it's much less of a threat at home. At least I always thought it was. Oh yeah. Really, I mean, it comes we- down to me forgetting about it. Yeah. I always knew and I always used to have it off and then I kept forgetting about it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's not something I, I ever really thought about. Cause you know, I've always just kept it on for convenience for the most part. And, um, I have a Garmin watch and a lot of times my Bluetooth is on cause it sends my notifications to, my Garmin watch and now I'm like "Mm, I'll save battery life and I won't have to worry about anything yeah and it's just I mean it sucks that like everything now is like Bluetooth I'm like fuckers (laughs) all the (laughs) airpods all the watches Mm -hmm. everything is Bluetooth you can send people stuff via airdrop what's airdrop Bluetooth Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. everything is Bluetooth now and obviously, we're not trying to make you all paranoid. We're just saying, you know, but think we about are. These, just, just say about these little things that you aren't thinking about because we weren't thinking about them either. And that's why we're here. Well, we're just saying, like, you could at least, like, when going out into public, think about turning off your Bluetooth. If yeah. you're using your headphones or whatever, that's cool. Like, you do you, boo. But if you're really not using your phone when you're out, you could turn it off. Right, exactly. It doesn't hurt. You could just turn it off your phone and just, we could all just put down our phone, guys. Just put it that down. Too. It'll yeah. never happen, but. <laughs> yeah, just put, yeah, exactly. Just put your just phone put down. down. They also talked about like push notifications and obviously notifications from like Twitter and stuff doesn't matter. But if you have like a personal health app or like a doctor's app or whatever, you want to make sure that those notifications um, are proce- are off or 
aren't send sending like sensitive data because like even somebody just passing by your phone can see your notifications. And if your notification says something about your health, you obviously don't want that just popping up. Those are my like big tips that I didn't really think about and didn't necessarily think were all that important, but they can potentially make a difference. Yeah, I actually like loathe notifications. I like turn I them do all too. off. I do too. I have everything, Facebook, Instagram. I think my emails are on just because I get emails from the school, but that's about it because I'm with you. I hate notifications too. They drive me crazy. And all they do is give me anxiety because I'm like, oh my God, I have to check them. What is it? Yeah. And then like, I hate, you know how they, they used to, I don't think it does it anymore. How they used to have like the numbers. Like, yes. and I would see the little numbers on the screen and I'm like, yes. well, then I have to go see what it is. And sometimes even though I've gone and looked and now there's nothing, it'll still have a number by it. It would drive me insane. Yes. So I like turned all of them off. Like the only ones I get are like from text messaging and like self like if somebody called me called or like yeah. facetime I'm like that's yeah. it i'm like no yeah. notifications goodbye same with me i don't like the little number was the thing that gave me anxiety like you pick up your phone and see that you have a hundred emails and it's like i don't want to see that i don't want to know i have a hundred emails no thank you yep i mean i don't even have my email connected to my phone anymore i just can't go on the internet explore or type in gmail because i'm lazy I just have so many emails, which is also a problem, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, mine's mainly trash. It's mainly trash emails. Our podcast email goes directly to my phone. So if you guys email us, I will get it. Yeah. Sign up for the podcast email. Send us all the (laughs) emails. Send us all the emails. Come be a guest because like we talked about, we haven't talked about it again because we should, because it's going to happen this month. We are yeah. hitting our year. We are hitting our year mark on Valentine's Day, which is not going to be on a Friday this year. So, so on, cool. So we're hitting our year mark. Super exciting. And at our year mark, we finally decided that we are going to have guests on. So we want all different kinds of guests on. Come on, share your inspirational stories, whatever. So email us if you want to be a guest. We would love to have you. Uh, yeah, for sure. It'll be season two of How to Deal When Shit Gets Real. That was a shameless plug, but it's our own yes, podcast. Yes, it was. It so is our own plug. podcast. I can plug myself. It's fine. And exactly. then we'll hopefully also, with having guests on and starting season two, we will <laughs> also start posting on the U of Tubes, the YouTubes. Right. We're going to try. Um, We're going to try. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it's very intimidating. So, you know. We'll figure it out. If we're nah, gonna do it, Con- it'll be fine. Connie's gonna be the editor of of that if she's gonna do that. Cause I don't know if I can yeah. do any more editing. I might I might hurt. Kill somebody. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that because that just sounds very grotesque, Bad. but I might okay, hurt fine. somebody. Yes. Or pull out all your hair at least. Something. All, yes, all the and just because we didn't say it either, our email, which is slightly shorter than our name, is this shit is real podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, you might as well know. And, you know, hit us up at the email, hit us up on Instagram and Facebook. And this is how to deal and shit gets real. Have a, a lovely day, guys.